Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Good afternoon, members. Today is a very special day for me today because I have the honor to stand up here before you to nominate my friend, State Representative Harold Wright, as Speaker Pro Tem. You see, I have known Harold Wright for many, many years. We've been broadcasting buddies, if you will. He shared the same passion as I did for years before we ever got into the house, that of broadcasting. Both of us spent time in the radio business, served as sales managers and managers, and went on to buy radio stations. Well, we've been friends for many years. Neither one of us knew that the other was running until about midway through our campaigns. So it was a great surprise, a very good one, that we ended up here in the House of Representatives. Harold moved back to Oklahoma in 1975 to become part owner and general manager of KRPT Radio in Anadarko. He later fulfilled a lifelong dream when he purchased his hometown radio station and moved to Weatherford in 1991. Since then, he has added stations in Clinton and Cordell. He now operates four stations in western Oklahoma. I want you to know that Harold Wright is really good at that job. So good, in fact, that the Oklahoma Association of Broadcasters have voted him into the OAB Hall of Fame, something that few members ever enjoy. Harold is a man of many talents. Ask anyone that knows him, if I had five or six or eight people, you'd hear five or six or eight answers. His good friend and colleague, Senator Eddie Fields, tells me that Harold thoroughly enjoys working with those in his district on issues that are important to them. I know for a fact Harold is a man who cares deeply for others. During his campaign, he was knocking doors in Weatherford when he met a young boy who was extremely upset because he had had his bicycle stolen. Well, unbeknownst to the boy or the boy's family, Harold went out and bought that boy a new bicycle and had it taken to his house. His daughter Angela writes that when she thinks of her dad, it is his general attitude of service above self that stands out. My entire life, she says, my dad has lived that attitude of service. So while some say Harold Wright is about working or caring for others, if you talk to people in his community, what they tell me is service to community. A list of boards a mile long from Boy Scouts to the YMCA. He served as mayor of Anadarko, president of the Rotary Club, the Chamber of Commerce, and yes, the Oklahoma Association of Broadcasters. Still others know Harold as a man who deeply loves the Lord. Active in his church, serving on boards and committees, he shares a deep faith of his Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Harold and Carol have been married for 47 years. They have two children, Angela and Heston, and they're also blessed with two beautiful grand granddaughters, their names Abby and Ruby. Heston tells me that his dad loves spending time with both of those granddaughters. In fact, every year he takes them to spend a week in Colorado hunting rocks and uh, simply enjoying time together. I want you to know that over these last eight years, what I have seen is a man that does far more than it takes to serve his constituency honorably. One who works hard every single day, from early morning, most time till late evening. One who has served in leadership year after year, working with members on a wide range of topics. When Harold decided to run for this post several months ago, I sat down and asked him, why he wanted the position. I'll never forget what he told me. He told me he felt that serving our members was the best way to contribute to the House of Representatives, that success, 
as well as the state of Oklahoma. That shouldn't be surprising for anyone who knows Harold Wright. As his daughter Angela shared with me, service before self. Members, I am asking you to join me today in supporting the nomination of our friend and colleague, Representative Harold Wright, as Speaker Pro Tem of the Oklahoma House of Representatives. Well, I'm here to second his nomination, but I can tell you right now, I, there's nothing I could add. Just what a gracious uh, remarks that you've made, uh, given on behalf of, of Harold and set the tone in regards to what the, the qualities of this man, but I would like to add a couple of things and, and use my words. First of all, you've just been told, he was born and raised in the Weatherford area, educated there, left, came back, married, had a family, his family's here today, started uh, the radio business, you've just heard that he's increased that to four radio stations, I've had the honor of being interviewed on a couple of those radio stations, it's always a fun time. Very successful businessman, a community leader, there is no question, and what he's done, a devout Christian, but he received a calling, and that calling was to continue to service the District of 57, and he chose to do that. And I want to talk about the eight years that I've known this man. The first time I met him is when he first was elected and came up here. I've been impressed with him every time I've met him since then. When he came here as a freshman, his entire class, not only did they take their job serious, I can remember they would call me to a small working group where they would go over all their bills, since I was ahead of them a couple of years, they would like to get my input, and I would join that little uh, group in regards to going over bills. Very thorough, everyone had to come be well prepared. Harold is one that takes his charge very serious. You no know, question he cares about his district, but he also cares about this great state, and I'm very, very pleased and proud of that as well. Soon into his uh, years here in the House of Representatives, he took it upon himself that he wanted to become uh, more knowledgeable in regards to the rules and regulations that we govern ourselves under in this house. And he absolutely threw all of his energies into in regards to Robert's rules of order. Now why any human being would want to do that, I got to tell you. However, we know we know, we got to know him, but thank goodness we have people that want to know him. And he did that and he became extremely knowledgeable in regards to our rules. And then he served in the chair on numerous times. And then he approached me and he said, I want to run for the pro tem, and I said I think it would be a great idea. Members, he's an honorable man, filled with integrity. The good thing also you need to know, he'll listen to both sides of a, a person's point of view. He's respectful to both members, or both uh, chambers, meaning in regards to both sides of the aisle, in regards to Democrats' point of view, Republicans' point of view, but in regards to also though when a decision needs to be made, he stands behind that decision and will move forward on that position. He's all about Oklahoma, he's all about the well-being of this great state, and therefore, I stand before you today to second his nomination as the pro tem to the 56th legislature of this year. Harold, thank you for asking me to do this, and again, I second his nomination. Mr. Speaker, first of all, congratulations. I'm looking forward to working with you, and uh, we'll get some great things accomplished with the help of the House. Thank you, sir. I want to say a couple of thank yous. First of all, uh, I want to thank my wife, Carol, uh, who uh, has supported me throughout this process. We met in speech class at, at Southwest Oklahoma State U University. Cedric Crink was the, was the professor. The reason I'm looking up there, Bob Hayes was up here and a friend of mine from Weatherford, actually, and he had Cedric Crink in speech as well, so he knows who I'm talking about. But we met there some 47 years ago. so. Uh, we've had a great marriage, and I love you, and I just can't tell you how much she supports me in the work I do in the house. And so we, we were going to go on vacation this fall to Colorado. We love to go to Colorado, and particularly Carol. And, uh, you know, it's a tough time to try to decide whether to be out of town, and I wanted to help new members get elected. So instead of, um, instead of going to Colorado, she sacrificed for me so that I could get out and help some of you get elected. So thank you so much. Also, my daughter, my oldest, uh, is the district attorney in western Oklahoma and I'm proud of her and the work that she does there and her support there and we were just discussing that if I have if I don't follow the Constitution she's the one that would prosecute me that's kind of scary <laughs> and then my son Heston is here as well and Heston runs our business and I, I he's he's really uh, he came back a few years ago indicated he wanted to come to the radio in the back into the radio business and 
and I appreciate that very much. Without his help, I couldn't do this job, I promise you that much. I also want to thank Justice Cogger uh, today for uh, swearing me in. Uh, she's from Colony, which is a small town just south of, of Weatherford, and she's, uh, pr I'm proud of the fact that she's uh, uh, in the Hall of Fame for Southwestern as a distinguished alumni, so thank you for doing it. It meant a lot to me to, to have you here today to do, do the swearing in. Uh, I would be remiss if I didn't uh, mention some other folks, but first of all, I want to congratulate Ed Kennedy for uh, being nominated by his caucus uh, for Pro Tem, and I know that's a real honor, uh, Ed. Uh, our caucus, you know, you elected me to represent you, and I, I appreciate that very, very much, and I look forward to, to working with each and every one of you. And like the speaker said, you know, without our constituents, we wouldn't be anywhere. And so I thank the people of District 57 for electing me, giving me the opportunity to serve in the House of Representatives, which is, I think, the greatest experience. I love this body. And my roommate, Eddie Fields, came in with me. He went over to the other place. But I'm glad I'm here. This is a better place. It's because it's the people's house, and it's the closest to the people. My mother was here when I was sworn in nine years ago. Bless her heart. She was proud of the fact that I was elected as state representative. She passed away. I, I, we left here on Friday. I went back to Weatherford. We were gonna to go to Colorado the next day and I saw my mom and we had a nice visit. And then during the night she got sick and she never regained consciousness. So I lost my mom. She passed away on, on June the 1st of last year. And I gotta tell you that uh, she would be here and is here with me, I believe, in spirit today. And she was where I was growing up and was always supportive of anything that I did. So, Mom, thank you. I want to thank the, the, uh, class of, the, the leadership class of Oklahoma. I have several classmates that are here and have stayed for this whole thing. So, uh, from leadership class 30, would you all please stand and let us recognize some great people. I want to thank also my uh, legislative assistant, who I couldn't do this job without her, Dee Lemon. Many of you know her. She subs and fills in a lot up here. And uh, she is one of those that is so dedicated to this house and to, the, to my job as state representative. Is she here somewhere? Yes, there she is. Let's give her a hand for being here. And last but not least, I want to uh, thank my friends. Uh, for nominating me for this job. Uh, Pat Ownby and Earl Sears, representatives who do a great job for their district. Thank you so much. Now I wanna say something, this is not about me. It's about us. You know, somebody once told me there's no I in we. This is about us and what we do here, working together, so it's not about me. And I appreciate your, your thought concerning the, the members we have the first uh, Speaker of the House, Alf Alpha Bill Murray over here, and he was President of the Constitutional Convention. So this, this House has a, a great history, and I'm proud to, to be serving here. And I've looked at some of those pictures as well. Have any of you looked at the pictures? I think most of us have. If you haven't, you need to take some time and look at some of the, the legislatures. I've looked at them, and I thought, as I looked at the pictures of past legislatures, a little different, I wondered what might have been said what people, what representatives might have said on the floor, and what, than those who really might have made a difference. It's really hard to tell from the pictures, isn't it? And it's, it's even hard to tell from the journals or from any of the history as to what actually happened. Clothing and haircuts have changed, but we're reminded that what we say and do here is, all, is not often remembered, right? We need to remember that. It's just it's not remembered. It, it's what happens that, that, that's remembered. And I'm not naive enough to think that what I have to say here today is really going to be remembered very long as well. I just hope I can make a couple of points. You know, this is our time, folks. Speaker alluded to that. In a short window, think about it a minute, in, in eternity, on if an item, we have a short window of opportunity to open that window and to really accomplish something that can improve and build for the future of Oklahoma. I think that's important. I believe members, the Democratic Party as well as Republican, if we work together, we can accomplish something in this legislative session. 
I make these comments today as your humble servant and as your elected speaker pro tem, dedicated to both Democrats and Republicans. I make a pledge to help build Oklahoma and be fair as one of your leaders and presiding officers. At the turn of the century, shortly after the Capitol building was built, my grandfather, Harry Wright, organized a band. It was a brass band. It was made up of mostly relatives, including my great-grandfathers. One played the bare tone, the other played the bass drum. They were known as the Cottonwood Band, named after a dependent school district just out north of Weatherford. They also represented the Farmers Union. My grandfather used to boast about the fact that it was the first band to play in the state capitol. I thought, sure, Grandpa. Well, sure enough, after I got elected, I talked with Bob Blackburn, and I was telling him about my grandfather's band, and I said, wanted to know if there was any written evidence of the fact. And sure enough, he found a story in the Daily Oklahoman verifying that the Cottonwood Band played on the fourth floor of the rotunda on August 23rd, 1917. And that's just pretty remarkable, remarkable to me to think that my granddad was on the fourth floor 100 years ago playing in a band and I'm up here as a state representative. Quoting from the Daily Oklahoma on August the 23rd, 1917, I'm gonna quote, suddenly somewhere in the state house, a brass band broke loose with a blare and fanfare that was new to the Capitol. It was unheard of thing and the first music to stimulate the echoes in the state house since its completion. Clerks slammed their ledgers shut. Stenographers forgot to chew their gum. And officials brought down their chairs with a bang. Offices were emptied in less than nine seconds and the several hundred men and women housed by the domeless state house raced here and there through corridors in search of the music. It was the Cottonwood Band. You know, it was a band in a brand new building in a brand new state. I believe that my grandfather would be proud of the fact that I'm here as a state representative, just like your parents and grandparents are, would be. But uh, more important than that, I ask myself daily, would he or our forefathers and our constituents be proud of our accomplishments? I think that's a question. Would they be proud of our accomplishments? Our forefathers of Oklahoma made a big difference by building a solid structure. I think you would all agree. It's got a strong foundation that's lasted 100 years. Legislatures have had the opportunity to tweak the structure. A dome was added in 1995. Repairs and changes have been made. Some good, some of them bad. Some of them not so good. Now we're in the process of restoring this magnificent structure. But actually, think about this a minute. We're rest restoring this building and this structure. This building and the hallowed halls that we're here and talking about are emblematic of much more than that. Don't you agree? Think about it. They're emblematic of our Constitution, which was written over 100 years ago, emblematic of our laws and action that we take as a legislative body. We'll be gone someday, as the speaker talked about, with term limits, but the future of Oklahoma depends on us now. We can make a difference. In our caucus meeting recently, I shared a poem. I'd like to repeat it again for the entire body. It's meant a lot to me. It was actually given to me by a Democrat, Representative Perryman. His name was Dave McCurdy, representative of the 4th District. He, he, uh, he, he spoke this one, recited this poem at one time, and I liked it when I was mayor of Anadarko, so I asked him if I could have a copy. So I'd like to read it to you now. It's called The Builder's Poem means a lot to me. So bear with me as I read it. I watched them tear the building down, a group of men in a busy town. With a whole heave hove and a lusty yell, they swung the beam and the sidewall fell. I asked the foreman if these men were skilled. He gave a laugh and said, no, indeed, these men can tear down in a week or two what it takes builders years. 
to do. As I went on my way, I asked myself which of these roles I had played. Had I been a builder counting my deeds by the rule and square, or had I been a wrecker, a wrecker content with the job of tearing it down? You know, we have a choice. We can either build or we can tear down. At the end of the next two years, we have to ask ourselves, will our forefathers, our people, our constituents be proud of our accomplishments? We have to ask that. Hopefully they will, because they probably won't remember or, or the, the, what we have to say and the arguments we have will probably not be remembered, but what we accomplish will be remembered. My challenge to each of you is that we work together to build a better Oklahoma. Through the grace of God, we can and must meet this challenge. This is our time to build. God bless the House of Representatives and the great state of Oklahoma. Thank you and God bless.